The woman pressed the switch, the gigantic shark bait lowered down. A second later a huge creature jumped up and snapped up the bait. Everyone then realized this was a prehistoric monster extinct for nearly 2,000 years. At the top of the food chain in the Cretaceous period, the 21-meter-long, 33-ton giant blue sea dragon. The shark in its mouth was just like a fly. To attract more visitors, scientists used advanced gene editing technology, taking the Tyrannosaurus rex genes as a basis, combined with the advantages of other animals to develop an even more ferocious monster than the Tyrannosaurus rex. Just looking at it, one could feel its scariness. The area for keeping it always had to replace glass frequently because it was likely able to crack it. Investors began to be terrified, worrying about the safety of the park, so they hastily called the protagonist to inspect the area. He was the only one in the park who knew how to tame dinosaurs, he had four tame dinosaurs that could listen to some simple commands. The protagonist came to the area of the monster but saw no trace of it. Even when turning on the heat-seeking mode, there was nothing, as if there had never been a dinosaur in the area until they saw huge scratches on the wall suggesting the monster may have climbed over the wall and escaped. If it ran out of the area, it would be a disaster for all tourists on the island. The female lead hurriedly contacted the center for them to evacuate tourists near that area, but the center detected that according to the tracking chip, the monster had not yet left the area. It had fooled the tracking device of humans. Everything was a trap of it against mankind. The protagonist and everyone quickly ran away, but it was too late, the monster had grabbed a person and swallowed them whole. Seeing the dangerous situation, another staff member opened the door to run away alone. In the crucial moment as the door was about to close, the protagonist managed to escape from the area, but the monster also slipped out through the gap. The protagonist slid under a car, observing the monster smashing through the exit door, not daring to breathe heavily. The monster sniffed following the smell to where the staff was hiding behind the car. At this moment, the most regretful thing for the staff was coming to work at this park, he didn't even have time to pray before the car was flipped over violently. The protagonist then hurriedly used a small knife to cut the gasoline pipe and sprayed gasoline all over himself to mask the human smell from the monster. The monster slowly lowered its head near the protagonist. The protagonist lay motionless on the ground, eyes shut tightly, not daring to make a sound. Luckily, the camouflage tactic with gasoline was successful in tricking the monster's sense of smell. The protagonist narrowly escaped danger, but the threat was still not over. If the monster ran out of the park, it would certainly be a horrifying bloody massacre. Since being created by humans, it had always been confined in a cage. When realizing the outside world for the first time, it would slaughter all creatures indiscriminately. The protagonist requested evacuating all tourists but was blocked by the greedy investor because if they evacuated, the park would go bankrupt. The armed forces followed the tracking device but only found a piece of flesh with blood, clearly the monster had ripped out the tracking chip from its body. A few drops of blood fell down from the sky. The soldiers slowly looked up to see a dinosaur revealing itself. The monster quickly grabbed a soldier, smashed them violently into the ground and then stomped them dead. It began its slaughter. In its eyes, humans were no different than flies, dead or injured made no difference. It was like a cold-blooded killing machine, making the massacre extremely horrifying. In just a moment, the entire armed forces were annihilated by it. Humans wanted to profit from dinosaurs but had inadvertently created a killing machine. If tourists were not evacuated quickly, the island would surely be flooded in blood. When the investor came to the gene expert to ask, they found out the monster carried genes of both squids and tree frogs, so it could camouflage by adapting to the environment. At the same time, two young nephews had accidentally wandered into the park, completely unaware that danger was lurking. When they looked back, the monster suddenly appeared. It kicked the two brothers then began attacking the other dinosaurs. They were dinosaurs with extremely hard back armor but the monster could still flip them over then bite through their necks in one snap. At this time, the phone rang attracting the monster's attention. It began wrecking the glass gondola cable cars, one swipe smashed through the reinforced glass. It opened its mouth wide trying to swallow the entire cable car. Suddenly the bottom of the car was smashed apart. The two brothers cleverly undid their seatbelts and narrowly escaped. Seeing the prey escape from its grasp, the monster let out a frenzied roar then began chasing the two brothers. They were driven to a steep cliffside. The older brother held tightly onto his younger brother then jumped down into the river below. When the protagonist and two others arrived at the scene, they only saw dinosaur corpses everywhere. Clearly, the monster did not kill them to eat but only for entertainment. Following its footsteps, they found the completely destroyed cable car. From the footprints on the ground, they guessed the two children had probably escaped. But right then the two people suddenly saw the monster again and had to desperately run away. 
Luckily, a helicopter arrived. The infantry unleashed a hail of machine gun bullets at the monster. It fled and accidentally crashed into a nest of pterosaurs, sending hundreds of them flying out from the opening. The pterosaurs rammed and blew up the helicopter. The flock flew to the tourist gathering area and attacked everyone. In an instant, the dinosaur park became a hell on earth with bloody casualties everywhere. They swooped down at people from the sky and played with them savagely, only dropping them into the water when bored, as if discarding toys. Finally, the giant blue sea dragon jumped up and swallowed both people and pterosaurs whole. The protagonist came with the armed forces afterward, trying to use guns to drive away the flock of pterosaurs but was knocked down by them. In the emergency situation, the female lead showed off her superpowers, using a gun to rescue the protagonist. To reciprocate, the protagonist kissed her immediately, leaving the two young nephews next to them dumbfounded. The female lead was extremely embarrassed, had no time to explain before the protagonist led everyone fleeing to the area for the train tamed dinosaurs. Because the monster was too ferocious, the protagonist only had the option left of summoning the pack of long train tamed dinosaurs. These tame dinosaurs were an early Jurassic period carnivorous species, they moved nimbly and their pack combat power was very strong. They dashed out like bolts of lightning charging into battle with the protagonist. But very soon after that, the pack of tame dinosaurs stopped in their tracks when they located the monster. However, instead of attacking the monster, they seemed to be communicating with it affectionately. Then unfortunately, they had forgotten that the genes of the tame dinosaurs were also present in the monster's genes, and it was very skilled at seducing and manipulating hearts. In just a moment, the monster had succeeded in making the pack of tame dinosaurs betray them, changing their attack target to the soldiers standing to the side. The soldiers immediately opened fire, shooting rockets that struck and knocked the monster to the ground. But the extraordinarily agile pack of tame dinosaurs, before the soldiers could react, had one by one killed each of them. At the same time, on the other side the female lead was also facing danger. After discussing, the two decided to return to the laboratory. But when they arrived, they discovered a group of people preparing to take the dinosaur's genes. Even if the park closed down, they could still find other ways to create more dinosaurs. Right when the villains were gleefully celebrating, a tame dinosaur suddenly charged in from somewhere and headed straight for them. The protagonist and his group quickly ran away, but had just gotten out the door when they were blocked by another tame dinosaur. Now they were in trouble, with three tame dinosaurs surrounding them. However, they did not attack and seemed to still recognize the protagonist as an old friend. The protagonist put down his weapons and stroked them affectionately, removing the chains from around their necks. They seemed to sense the protagonist's sincere attitude and gradually calm down. But right then, the monster suddenly attacked. Seeing their kind killed, the two remaining dinosaurs also charged to attack the monster, with the protagonist supporting beside. But in the end, they were all mercilessly slaughtered by the monster. Facing that dangerous situation, the female lead had no choice but to take a risk. She was seen turning back, running into Zone 9 to notify the center to open the large gate. The gigantic creature slowly walked out from the darkness. That was the king of the land, Baryonyx. She threw the signal stick towards the Indominus Rex. It could be said, a battle of the century, surpassing tens of thousands of years of history, had just begun. However, the old king was also no match for the Indominus Rex. After a few moves, Baryonyx was pushed to the ground. It was about to make its final blow when a Velociraptor charged over, jumping on the Indominus back and biting its neck. Baryonyx took the opportunity to bite the Indominus neck, pushing it into the building next door. The Indominus was completely helpless against the attack from Baryonyx. However, it still tried to stand up and roared at its enemy. The final result, the brutal monster Indominus was dragged into the ocean by the Mosasaurus, the king of the seas. The disaster created by humans also came to an end. After defeating Indominus, Baryonyx did not harm humans and quietly left. The protagonist emerged from the rubble, bidding farewell to the Velociraptor. The Velociraptor also decided to return to nature. After this disaster, humans realized one thing, the extinction of dinosaurs was not a coincidence. If humans intentionally brought dinosaurs back through cruel means, it would become a disaster for mankind.